Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at um, an overview of what the learning has been for this week. I've received a couple of emails this afternoon from people who um, are saying that they are struggling with um, how to begin the tasks that I've set for this week on setting characterisation and comparing the endings in the four short stories. I believe that these emails have come off the back of a group call being sent out today to do with engagement. So I just wanted to say something about engagement. During the last lockdown, it was enough for you to go into your lessons with your teachers and like posts um, to be considered that you were engaging um, in the lesson just by liking a post. This time round, um, we have been told by Ms Loudon and Mr Shanklin that that is not enough. In order to be considered engaging in each of your subjects, for every single period that you are in, you need to produce work and give that to your teacher, either through class notebook, email, or however your your teacher wants, uh, wants to receive that from you. Um, the group call that was sent out today was done because, um, if you received a group call, it was done because I haven't um, received, I haven't seen any, um, any evidence today of work from the people who were group called today. Um, you might have liked a post, but like I say, that's not enough anymore. So please keep that in mind as you're going forward. Um, you have to follow, the school's made a decision that you have to follow um, your normal timetable like you would in school. And because of that, that means that your teachers are having to follow their timetables as normal as well. So because of that, if you email me or get in touch with me um, through Teams about you having difficulty um, starting a task or finishing a task or you don't understand part of the lesson um, or you don't understand the lesson from yesterday or the day before or whatever, I'm not going to be able to answer you and help you outside of your normal English period. The reason for that is because I'm having to follow my own timetable as normal like if we were in the school building um, and I'll have classes when you're emailing me to ask ask this stuff. So if you have an issue with a task or um, a bit of uh, the lesson that I've explained that maybe you've not understood or maybe you need a, a more in-depth explanation, you need to tell me during your regular English periods, okay? Um, just think of the way that you would conduct yourself if you were in the school building. If you were in, in English with me, if you were in another class and you thought to yourself, oh, I don't know how to do that task that I'm supposed to do for tomorrow, would you then leave your current subject and come downstairs to English and interrupt my lesson to ask me a question about what you had done the day before? The answer is that you wouldn't. I don't know any of you that would do that. So in saying that, you have to um, sort of conduct yourself in the same way online as well. You have to consider that your teachers are going to have other classes. So any questions, any problems, any issues, please bring them up during your timetabled English periods. Okay. Now, um, for today, um, we're going to be doing some, um, we're going to be doing, sorry, looking at some tasks that I had set you earlier on in the week. Um, because I know that th although the majority of people in the class have either finished these tasks or are well on their way to finishing them. There are a couple of people that have flagged up that they're having issues with how to start them. Now, please remember that you cannot start any of the tasks without, first of all, looking at the instructions that I've posted each day in daily instructions on the team and watching the videos that I've created and given links to in daily instructions. Please do not try to do any tasks until you have watched the appropriate video in full. Okay, so I'm going to assume that everybody has watched the videos and I'm going to give you some um, exemplars of how to answer um, the questions that I've set to you and how to complete the tasks and then even if you've already finished the tasks or if you've started them and you kind of know what you're going to write for them, at least with this video, if you're in that boat, you'll still have um, a model answer that you can do a bit of self-assessment and self-evaluation um, against. You can look at my answer, 
look at your own answer and see if there's anything that you would change, anything that you would add, anything you would take out. Um, probably not anything you would take out. Probably just stuff that you would you would maybe add or change about if you feel like it. So um, I'm going to show you first of all the the first um, video and task that I had asked you to look at at the start of the week. So it was this one it's from the setting lesson. So um, I'm going to just say one thing. If you've not looked at the setting video, I'm moving forward with this just now, assuming that everybody has watched it. But if you have not watched the setting video, you must stop this video here now and go and watch the video on setting because what I'm about to do, what I'm about to show you will make zero sense to you without you having watched that video. OK, so. Um, there were two writing tasks. The first one was um, about Jackson and about his nostalgia about being back in Glasgow um, and about his tenement life. So the question that I had asked you to um, write an answer for was, is Jackson's nostalgia about tenement life causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have? Okay, so this was a writing task and you also had to do some analysis in it. So we're going to just look at the first one first and I'm going to give you an example. Okay, so I'm just going to move away from this screen just now um, and move over here. So on this Word document here, and I'll put this in, the, uh, in Teams as well under files, um, this is the task that I've just read out. Is Jackson's nostalgia about tenement life causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have? Now, with like with any question that you get in English at higher level, you need to structure your answer in a particular way. And the structure is by using point, evidence and explain. So remember your explanation is a combination of analysing that the evidence that you've given from the text, which will be in the form of a quote, but also probably a little bit of evaluation as well. So you're also going to be giving, um, uh, sorry, explaining how the um, how your analysis relates to the real world or what the message is that the um, that the writer wanted to give across to, to the reader okay so um, we're going to start by um, just I'm going to start by giving you an example of what you could write for this now I've obviously thought about the question that I've given you about not Jackson's nostalgia um, and how uh, how that sort of changes or doesn't change. I wanted you to think about that and um, give your own sort of opinion on the back of that about whether or not it's his nostalgia that's making him think that Glasgow's changed. Um, but I haven't like sat down and thought, right, this is the exact way that I would write it. What I'm going to do just now is show you the writing process. This is me thinking out loud and writing at the same time. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to give my point and I need to relate my point to the task. So I need to always make it clear that I am answering the question or I am addressing the task. So if the task says, is Jackson's nostalgia about tenement life causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have? That's a yes or a no question there. So. I think that I am going to say yes to start off with. So in order for me to give that point across, I'm going to say something along the lines of Jackson's nostalgia. Oh, I don't like that. Let's get rid of the red, make that black. So Jackson's nostal nostalgia, sorry, about tenement life is causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have. That's it. All I've done is, uh, is take that question and turn it into a statement, a statement of perceived fact. Okay. Um, so now I need to give a quotation that is going to back up what I've just said there about the fact that I think that yes, Jackson's nostalgia is making him feel that things have changed more. Where am I going to get the, this evidence? I could get it from the story. However, if I'm one of you guys, I'll be sitting there going, well, my teacher gave me this question after she explained a whole load of quotes to us. So I bet you some of those quotes 
have something to do with this question. So I'm going to go back to the video that I uh, made for you guys um, and showed you earlier in the week on setting. And this, I've paused it here, and this is the bit where I had actually presented the task to you, okay? Um, and I had asked you to, to answer this question. So I'm just going to move it back a little bit because this is what I would do if I was one of you. If I was one of you, I would pause it here and go, right, here's the task. Look at this huge amount of time here where my teacher's been talking about the story and giving me quotations and things like that and explaining the quotations. I wonder if anything that's happened before she gave me this task has got anything in it that's going to help me with this task because the probability of your teacher giving you a task after the, they've been talking about something, you can bet that the stuff they've been talking about is going to help you with the task. So I've put it back here. This is where I was talking about the past and the present. So if I would you if I were you guys, I would probably be thinking, yeah, if there's a table here that's comparing the past to the present, giving me some quotations on the past, giving me some quotations that tell me about the present in Glasgow, and the questions asking me about whether or not Jackson's um, nostalgia is uh, making them think that things have changed and stuff so it's talking about the past and the present in Glasgow this is probably the place that you want to come for your evidence okay so I'm going to say I'm going to use these quotations here and I'm going to go back and I'm going to say Sorry, that's the wrong one, this one here. So I'm going to say here. Jackson remembers those days of poverty when he thinks about life in Glasgow. And in the present, I'm going to say when he thinks back, because that will indicate the past if I say back. And in the present, he not he, because it's not Jackson. I'm going to say and in the present, Crichton Smith, because he's the the narrator, because it's a third party. Crichton Smith re refers to the Jacksons walking into a, and I'm going to start my second quotation, into a close whose walls were, and I just need to keep flicking back and forward. pitted with scars. Okay. Loads of spelling mistakes there. There we go. So Jackson remembers those days of poverty when he thinks back, so I'm referring to the past, about life in Glasgow, and in the present, Crichton Smith refers to the Jacksons walking into a close whose walls were brown above and dirty blue below, pitted with scars. So here I'm going to explain what that shows about i'm going to refer back to the question about what that shows about jackson's nostalgia and how i think that that has caused him to think his nostalgia has caused him to think that things are different when actually they're pretty much the same so i'm going to say this shows and i want this to be black again this shows that um jackson remembers Glasgow as a place and remember you uh, you don't want to use the words of the quotations in your explanation so I kind of 
naturally want to use the word poverty again here but I can't because that's part of my evidence so I need to put that into another way so this shows that Jackson remembers Glasgow as a place that um, was difficult to live in due to the fact people didn't have much money and living conditions where I'm going to say hard and dirty. That's him talking about the past, but I've asked the question of how um, his nostalgia has caused him to feel that things have changed more than they have. So I've referred to the past, but now I also need to refer to the present. So now I'm going to say, now that Jackson is back in Glasgow, we see him entering a tenement close that is dirty and pitted with scars. The fact that the tenement is dirty shows that life in Glasgow is still rough and people have bigger concerns than the state of their living conditions. In addition, the fact that the close is scarred with what we imagine to be scores in the walls indicates that the tenement is damaged and hurt. This has implications of the people who live here being damaged and hurt as well. This is something that Jackson is more than familiar with due to his own experience of living in, and I'm going to quote it, poverty. In the past, in Glasgow. And now I'm just going to give one last um, line that just sums up how I've answered the question. So I'm going to say, this indicates that Glasgow itself is still poverty stricken and the people are, sorry, the people continue to live very difficult lives. Much like the life Jackson used to live. Okay, so something like that. That is just from the top of my head. You would go back, or I would actually go back as well, and go through that, read through it again if I had more time just now, um, and change different bits and 
um, reword certain things that I looked at and went, no, that actually doesn't make sense. I could probably say that better. I could probably put that into better phrasing. That's what you need to do as a higher pupil. You don't just write it and then go, right, next paragraph. You go back and you read it back over, okay? So anything that you give to me should not have any that's why i don't really ex i don't like accepting anything that's got any spelling mistakes in it any punctuation errors or anything like that in it because it tells me that you've not bothered to go back and read it over not just the spelling and the punctuation though it's your phrasing you need to make sure that your phrasing is tight that you have explained everything in detail okay um i've been getting some answers from some people that are just i mean this is this is probably about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's this sixteen lines. It's a sixteen line answer here, um, and I've been getting um, given some answers from from people that are maybe like four or five lines. That's not good enough. This is the ba This right here in front of you is the bare minimum that you need to do for a paragraph, a higher level. Okay, so please remember. Um, don't just rush through the work that I've given you. You need to make sure that your answers are full, detailed, and they answer the question. Are you answering the question and are you describing connotations? I want everybody to go back over their answers, not just the people that haven't yet finished. Everybody should go back over their answers and make sure that your answers are as detailed as the one that I've just written here, okay? now. If you were, if, if I was doing this answer, this, this full answer, I wouldn't just stop there either. I would go back, I would read over this paragraph, make sure that the phrasing was exactly the way that I wanted it to be. But I haven't fully answered the question yet. Because the question asks, is Jackson's nostalgia about tenement life causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have? Well, I've given an argument for yes, his nostalgia is causing that. But there is also a an argument to say that um, no, things actually have changed. Um, Jackson is not uh, being sort of hampered by his nostalgia here. Things have actually changed. So I would put a second paragraph here to finish off this explanation. That's what I would like you guys to do. Give me at least one paragraph that looks like this, that is as detailed as this that talks about how he has um, sort of overthought things um, and how, uh, ja how Glasgow hasn't changed, but then give me a second paragraph that shows, no, in fact, Glasgow has changed quite a bit. Um, and if you go back to the video, there are things in this section of the setting video that show you things that used to be there in Glasgow and things that are no longer there or new things that have sprung up. Um, so you can use those for the second part of your answer. Um, I would ask that because I've given you this, um, because I've given you this piece of evidence here, I would ask you to find your own piece of evidence for, um, for this argument about Jackson's nostalgia um, is causing him to feel that things have changed more than they have. Okay, so use something else for that and then argue the other side of it, okay? So, um, I'm going to put this up on uh, up on Teams so that you can look at it and you can see it in your own, your own time, okay? So if I go back to the PowerPoint, the second, um, the second task that I had asked you uh, to look at was from the setting lesson again. And this time it was asking you, by referring closely to the text, show how setting has been used to highlight the idea that home is not a place, but act is actually a state of mind. Okay, so I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about that. Um, and yeah, go here. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, and give you an example of what you could uh, what you could write for that. Here it is here. I thought I'd lost that there. Um, so this is the task that I've set you. So this is the task that I've just read out on the PowerPoint. Um, and again, you need to give um, point, evidence and explanation, analyze and where possible, you need to evaluate as well, okay? 
So this time I've already made up the point and I've already given the evidence and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the explanation together, okay? Um, so throughout the story, uh, Mrs. Jackson has been short-tempered and hostile while her and her husband have been exploring the streets of Glasgow. It has been evident from the start that she does not enjoy revisiting the place that she once lived. However, when they arrive at the first class hotel, Mrs. Jackson's mood brightens considerably. So there's a few things that I want to just say about this task here and about what I've written for the point. This task is slightly different to the task that I've just talked about up here. So this task here, the first task is asking you about a specific point in the story. It's asking you about Jackson's nostalgia and about the question of whether or not things have changed. So it's asking you about something specific in the story. However, this question here is asking you to refer closely to the text. It doesn't say refer closely to the beginning of the text. It doesn't say refer closely to the end of the text. It doesn't say refer closely to the part of the text where the punks come in. This is asking you to talk about the text as a whole. So when you're being asked to talk about a text as a whole, then you know that your answer is likely to be bigger than any question, any answer to a question that's asking you to look specifically at a, a, a particular point in a text. So your answer here is probably going to be about, and I'm just gonna write it here, your answer here is probably going to be about a minimum of four paragraphs long. And when I say minimum of four paragraphs, four paragraphs would probably be, uh, if you were just doing four paragraphs, they would probably have to be quite hefty paragraphs, if I'm honest. Okay, so a minimum of four paragraphs for this, because to be quite honest, to answer this question, to show how setting has been used to show that home is not a place, but it's a state of mind, there are loads of things in this short story that you could um that you could talk about because that's the whole point of the story this bit here is the whole message of the story so it's um it's alluded to all the way through the story so i've just picked this one part of the story it just so happens that it's at the end um, and I've just described briefly, my point is, is that all throughout, Mrs. Jackson has been nipping at her husband, why are we here, I don't like it here and everything, hates the tenement life, hates thinking about that, then gets back to the first class hotel and she, her mood just elevates. And here's the evidence that I've, um, that I've pulled out. His own wife put her hand in his as they got out of the car. Now she was smiling and trailing her fur coat. Okay, so now I'm going to do the explanation for this. And again, I've because this question was so big, because it comprises the entire story, I wanted to go and do my point and my evidence before I, I showed this to you guys because it would take too long for me to look at it while you're sort of sitting there watching this. Um, but I'm doing the explanation just like on the hoof. I don't. I have not thought about what I'm going to write yet. Okay, I'm just going to do this as I go. So again, I'm going to break up the quotation because this particular quotation here, there are loads and loads and loads of things in here that I can um, pull out and analyse in relation to um, highlighting how home is a state of mind for Mrs Jackson instead of a place. So I'm going to start with uh, a, an easy one. I'm going to say... The fact that Mrs. Jackson, sorry, I want this to be black again. Mrs. Jackson is smiling. I should quote that actually. The fact that she's smiling shows that her mood has changed. When she was in Glasgow, sorry, I'll say in the streets of Glasgow. She was extremely uncomfortable and unhappy 
but now that she is in a first class hotel and remember the first class hotel is still in Glasgow so it's got nothing to do with the play it's got nothing to do with the city now that she is in a first class hotel in Glasgow she is expressing her happiness through a smile this is because Mrs. Jackson, sorry, I'll say this is because the people that Mrs. Jackson is now surrounded by are of a similar social standing to her and this makes her feel happier and more comfortable than being out in Glasgow streets, being surrounded by people of a lower social class than her. So that's me just um, analysing the, the quotation of smiling um, but there's other parts of this that I want to talk about as well. So I also want to say, I'll say in addition, all throughout the story, Mrs. Jackson has displayed contempt for her husband. But now, she... And I'm going to quote this, puts her hand in his as they go to the hotel. This is an intimate gesture that shows closeness. I'm going to say closeness, trust and love between to people. The fact that Mrs. Jackson has chosen the setting of the first class hotel to display these feelings indicates that her mental state is now more at ease because she is now surrounded by people she perceives to be more like her. And I also want to talk about the fact that she is trailing her fur coat. Lastly, Mrs. Jackson can be seen to be, sorry, seen to be trailing her fur coat. And I know it doesn't say trailing, but it's fine. Um, so she can be seen to be trailing her fur coat whereas now I'm going to compare it to a bit earlier on in the story so this shows the importance of knowing the full story and um, so if you've not read the story in a while go back and read it very very important that you know the story and you can remember certain bits of it because that helps you with analysis so let last Mr. Jackson can be seen to be trailing her fur coat whereas earlier in the story she holds her coat around herself evidently afraid of getting it dirty on the streets of Glasgow. The fact she allows it to trail now 
indicate that she perceives the setting of the first class hotel to be clean and free of the dirt and poverty that the streets of Glasgow are riddled with. All of this indicates, actually I'm going to take that out, I'm going to finish up by saying, because I've analysed the three different bits that I wanted to, so now I need to go back and answer the question um, properly. So I've said, um, by referring closer to the text, showed how the setting has been used to highlight the idea that home is not a place, but is actually a state of mind. So now I want to say, um, both the tenements and the first class hotel are in Glasgow. So it is not the setting of Glasgow that is affecting Mrs. Jackson. In fact, it is The way both areas make her feel as a person due to the people she is, the people and comforts, I'll say, and comforts she is surrounded with. The tenements remind her of a previous life where poverty was prevalent and this makes her uncomfortable. However, the first class hotel is clean and is filled with people of a similar social standing to her, which makes her feel safe. And that's how I've shown that home is actually a state of mind for her. Okay, so again, this, um, I'm going to put this down a little bit just so you can see exactly how much I've written there. Um, so you can see that is a lot that I've written there. Um, that is a that's a higher answer. Um, that's a higher level answer. Um, and you need to be able to break up quotations and answer in that de in that level of detail. Um, it's not enough. Um, to just say things like, uh, oh, his own wife put had his hand in her hand in his as they got out of the car. Now she was smiling and trailing her fur coat. This shows that she's happy because she's in the first class hotel or this shows she's happy because she's around different uh, a different class of people or this shows that she's happy because she is away from the dirty, poverty-stricken tenements. That's not enough for an explanation at higher. You must always, no matter what the task is, be willing and able to break up the quotation and analyse its parts. And that's what I've been saying to you since day one. Um, at, at higher level so please make sure that you do that and I'm going to put this document with this answer and the answer that I did for question one or task one up here um, I'm going to put this on the teams page okay now if I go back to this uh, PowerPoint here um, those were the two tasks for setting so if you haven't completed those tasks yet please do that um, and please um, please put your your answers up on class notebook or email them to me if you've not done that already the second task um was for the characterization lesson so again you need to watch the characterization video if you've not done that already and then complete the worksheet um that's titled characterization of jackson and then complete the worksheet that's titled 
characterisation of Mrs Jackson and both of those documents are in the Scottish set text folder in the files section of Teams. I'm not going to go over answers for those because it's quite sort of self-explanatory what you need to do for that. Um, if you have a look at the at the tables, at the, the worksheet here, I've given you examples here and that's for one character trait. So characterization of Jackson, he's in control and dominant, giving you a couple of examples and then you need to just fill in the blanks and then do it for character trait two. There's a couple of examples, fill in the blanks. Character trait three, fill in the blanks. Okay, so I'm not going to go over how to write answers for those because I've already given you examples there. The last lesson that I had asked you to look at was the comparison lesson on the endings of the short stories. Um, I fixed, or I think I fixed, the Microsoft Forms quiz today. Um, so please go on to the Microsoft Forms quiz. Um, that's just asking you to remember um, some of the stuff that I've talked about in the, the video lesson. For comparison on the comparison lesson on endings so again you need to watch the video first and then do the tasks so it's always video first and then do the tasks so watch the video on the comparison lesson on endings then do the microsoft forms quiz again i can't really give you any help with that because it's just questions you put in an answer and then it'll come back to me um and then the second, well I should say number two there, um, the second uh, task is by referring to all the short stories explain the impact of the endings on the reader. Again, because this is asking you to refer to all the short stories, you know that your answer is going to be quite hefty, it's going to be quite big because you need to explain um, the endings of all of the short stories, okay? Um, again, you're not going to know how to do that without watching the video on this first. So you must watch that video before attempting this task, okay? Now, for this second task here, again, you need to be using P paragraphs. Um, I'm going to assume that the, the explanations of the level of depth and detail that you need at higher level that I've given for the other two answers, the other two tasks, sorry, um, I'm going to assume that that's going to be enough help for you um, to complete this task. But like I said at the beginning of, um, of this video, if you have any trouble whatsoever in how to start this task and how to um, construct your answers um, and how to construct your phrasing, um, if you want to use better vocabulary, if you're not sure where you can find a quote or something like that, then please, please, please ask me during the lesson, okay? I'm going to leave it there now guys because I know that I've spoken for quite a long time um, but please make sure that you um, if you if you want to go back over the the examples that I've given um, then please do that please um, please go back to the, the that part of this video and go back over um, my explanations for how I've written up those uh, those P paragraphs for those two tasks if you're happy with that and you want to just go on with it then you can go into the Scottish set text folder and you can find the word documents of those example um, paragraphs in there and you can just have them up beside your own writing and your own tasks um, so make sure that you you have a look at those um, while you're doing your answers. Also, if you've already completed your answers for those, please use those example paragraphs to self-assess. Look and see the level of detail that I've written. Have you honestly written using the same amount of detail? I've already given people feedback. Um, I've not finished going through everybody's answers for these yet, but I've already been giving people feedback saying that's not enough. It's not detailed enough, it's not in-depth enough, you haven't explained it enough, you haven't even began to look at uh, connotations or anything. Um, so please, please be honest with yourself. Um, have you written enough? Go back and look at your answers. And if you think the answer is no, write your answers again. Add into your answers. Okay. Any questions, please ask me during the lesson. Okay, thanks guys.